Hi guys, Stuart Tomlinson from Warrior Collective, uh, back once again inside chats. I hope you're well with your listening or watching this. Uh, I'm really thrilled to uh, let you know who my next guest is. So today we have uh, the phenomenal actress, martial artist and globally sought after stunt performer, Lauren Mary Kim joining us. Lauren, how are you? Hi, thank you so much for having me. Um, it's a pleasure. Oh, it's, it's amazing to have you on. I mean, uh, for me personally, when, you know, obviously I, I, I've been following you for quite a while and I know the work you're involved in, um, but you're kind of, you seem to be, if, it's like if someone gave me a, a notebook and said, okay, Stuart, I want you to write down all the shows that you love and want to be involved with. It's kind of like, that's what someone seems to have done with you. You seem to be in so many uh, amazing <laughs> projects. It uh, kind of makes me jealous. And I think I've mentioned it before. You kind of like uh, living the life. Um, but before we get tackling, um, you know, how amazing that where you are now is, if we go back a little bit, because obviously no one gets to where you are overnight. When, when, when did you first start training in martial arts, for example? Because I know that's obviously a massive thing for you now. Um, I actually started later, you know, I didn't start as a child like a lot of people did. Um, I actually started uh, in college, which is seems late, but you know, um, I, I just really believe that you can pick up anything at any age. And, you know, as long as you love it, you can just really, you know, inspire yourself to work hard to get to where I guess I am at now. But yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah I guess it surprises a lot of people that I started pretty much later in life. So yeah. But it wasn't the first um, kind of physical activity that you'd done, though. Had you what 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 had you been doing prior to that growing up? Then, so my whole life, I was actually a dancer. Um, I did acrobatics competitive competitively as a child, and then I did uh, dancing as well. I did competitive dance, um, and then you know just sports and everything as a child. Um, and then I actually moved to LA to um, to go after my dance career um and that's where I actually was introduced to martial arts I met a bunch of stunt guys at an open gym an open like gymnastic gym and um they introduced me to martial arts and the first martial art was taekwondo and that's where I enrolled into a taekwondo school and got my black belt in so that was my very first beginning of this world that I love so much yeah, because in, in LA, there's quite a big scene, isn't there, for, um, and I guess back then, there was, like, tricking, you know, um, just just kind of going around and doing acrobatic-type martial arts movements just for fun, or for for films. So there's, there's, there's quite a big scene for that, isn't there, there's, with these open mat ones. And I'm guessing Taekwondo was a good first one for you, because you've come from dance, you'd be flexible, good coordination. Um, so what... what how, how, how did you find getting, getting involved in martial arts at that point? What do you remember about it starting it then? Um, you know, it, like you said, it's very similar to dance taekwondo. Um, you know, the flexibility, the kicking, because, you know, dancing has a lot of kicking as well. Um, so it was a really easy transition for me. It, you know, I had to learn more about the power, I think, was in the aggressiveness of the movement, which is a lot different than dance. But... Um, but I was able to learn like the forms really quickly. Um, and then, you know, I came from a sparring school, so that was really new to me. <laughs> um, but yeah, that taught me so much about timing and distance, my God. And it was a good, like good lesson for me just for life too, just to show how I can be against, you know, competing against someone, you know, and not, you know, and learning more about like your mental state when you spar and like, you know, how emotional you can become when you spar. And uh, yeah, it was just definitely a, a journey in that aspect for sure. Yeah, because it's, it's a big, well, it, like you said before, it's um, like we just mentioned, it's not a big jump from a coordination point of view, but there's a big jump from, 
okay, being judged in dance on, on the aesthetics, how it looks, the rhythm, the timing, to suddenly, actually, it's the functionality and can you stop yourself getting hit and can you out-hit this other person? So how did you, fi- how did you find those early days of sparring then and, and getting hit? Man, it was tough. It was a hard lesson. I remember getting punched in the face, kicked in the leg. Uh, I got bloody nose. I broke my nose twice, (laughs) Um, you know, um, but I also, you know, was able to learn, you know, like I said, distance and speed um, coordination with eye eye coordination. Um, Man, it was, you know, I would go to tournaments and fight guys sometimes. So it was nerve wracking. It was stressful, but you know, I'm so glad I, I experienced it because that's a lot of martial arts, right? The, the application of sparring and fighting. No, for sure. And so how, like you mentioned, you went there for dance. How does someone who go to LA for dance end up kind of switching and moving into the world of stunts? And because it's not, it's not usual in terms of to go there for dance and then end up in stunts, is it really? I mean, there's a few girls that go through the same route that I did, but yeah, it's not typical usually. Um, Yeah, I mean, you know, in the dance world in LA, it's super competitive and very cutthroat. And that's what was one of the things that turned me off about that industry. I just was like, it, it just wasn't for me, you know, I just wasn't happy in it. And when I met a bunch of stunt people and started training with them, I just felt like it was more home. It just felt more right. I just felt more like me. So um, it was just an easy transition, but I just had to work harder than most people because they trained their whole lives as a martial artist and I did not. So that's what was a little harder for me. But um, but yeah, I became easy, like quickly obsessed with martial arts. And then, then I started training in other martial arts and that gave me like a library of knowledge for me to really help me in the industry, in the stunt industry. So how did you get into uh, you know at that point how did you get into stunts obviously now you decided that you wanting to do it but it's one thing wanting to do it and then actually getting your first jobs what what were you doing to train and and how did you get those first few jobs then at that point so i was training at la valley college this is like many many years ago and you know a lot of stunt people train there so i was able to meet and network with people Um, and so I would, you know, I was training flipping, um, martial arts reactions, um, you know, how to fall, how to drive, how to do all different wire work. So, um, you know, it's a slow progression of like meeting people, but that's just kind of how you get in. You kind of just have to meet people and hustle. There's a thing called hustling where you like literally go crash a set and try to find the stunt coordinator and meet him and give him your headshot and resume. (laughs) <laughs> which sounds crazy I don't think we can do that now because of COVID but but that's how people used to get jobs like 10-15 years ago <laughs> and what do you remember as your first couple of jobs and what did you have to do for them when you when you first first started out I think my very first job was for like a Nickelodeon show and they had me doing like back handsprings down like a school hallway and that was like my first job and I was only like like two hours and I was like wow that's like cool it's super fast and easy um but then I found out later obviously you're on set for like many many hours <laughs> sometimes not doing anything so um yeah that was my first job and then um I think my second job maybe I think I had to like oh man I'm trying to remember because it, it was so long ago now um I remember one job I did um it was actually a couple of us we had a double Lucy Lou. And it was this uh, gag where she's running on water on and they built like a platform in the water. So it looks like she's running on water. And then she trips over a boat and does a header into water. So I know Jade Kwan was one of the other doubles and ended up using her footage, but we all got to do it, which was kind of cool. And I was so nervous. I didn't know if I could do it, but (laughs) you know, you learn along the way and you know, you build courage as every job comes along. And so yeah, that's just, <laughs> I was so nervous that job. <laughs> no, well, I can imagine because th- it's not like, um, it's like medical school, is it, where you go through this real structure? You know, we, we've stunt some guessing it's, you know, you kind of have to, like you just said, you have to do a bit of learning on the job, training as much as you can and preparing and, and kind of, and being a bit bullshit and gung-ho, I would imagine, in, in LA, in, in, in that circle of, 
of that community anyway. Yeah, exactly. Because every job is completely different and they may ask for something totally different or something that, you know, they never thought of before. So it's like, you got to kind of figure it out and like rehearse and, you know, it's a learning curve for sure. So like you mentioned before, you take your martial arts really seriously. I know you've been involved with Master Simon Ree, Girl, Girl Dan and Asanto. So tell, tell me about that expansion then into, into more serious martial arts. Not that Taekwondo is not serious, but what I mean is moving into developing other aspects of, of your knowledge base and, and seeking out these people who are obviously well known in the martial arts world. Yeah, um, you know, I, I got my black belt in Taekwondo. Um, you know, I love Taekwondo. It was my first martial arts, but I just wanted to learn another style that was completely different. So I, my next art was uh, Wushu, Chinese martial arts. Um, and there I met some instructors and in schools. I trained at different schools and that was just, man, that was like one of the most physically draining <laughs> martial arts because you're jumping really high in the air into a, like a drop stance and then they want you to do a flip and another thing with like wushu is that they don't want you to make noise like so when you make noise you actually lose points when you do like a competition <laughs> so it, it's a completely different martial art but it's such a beautiful uh style and it you know it closely mirrors dance as well so that was my second martial art and then my third one um is actually a bunch because i i started training at um Guru Dan in Santos Academy, and there, you know, he he trains in every martial arts, you know, uh, Filipino martial arts, Sila, JKD, Muay Thai, um, Shuto, Jiu Jitsu, like they have everything there. Um, but yeah, so I started training there, and that's where I, you know, learned all those different styles. And then from there, <laughs> I wanted to learn more, and um, I wanted to do something completely different, which was um, Capoeira. And, you know, that is obviously a lot closer to, um, like, dance. But it also is very similar to Silat in some ways, um, but still different. And it, it's just a culture thing, too, you know. It's just a, everything. The music, everything. It's just, a you know, they really, like, envelop themselves in the culture, which is, I really, I think, is amazing. But, yeah, Capoeira is another, like, super draining martial arts. Like, if you, I don't know, have you ever trained? Yeah, Capoeira? no, I've, tra I've trained in Capoeira, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it is like tiring. It's one of the more tiring ones. And that, and, that, and that's the other thing as well, when I've seen you doing it, I mean, I'm, I'm guessing this is the combination of you coming from a dance background as well, and the fact that you um, are so heavily involved in stunts now. You, you, ta you take, um, you're really good at uh, playing the character style of that martial art, if that makes sense. So you kind of, you sh you switch between the styles and stylistically I can see that switch you know so you're portraying that that movement of that stereotypically goes with that martial art does that make sense yeah I mean that's a huge compliment so thank you yeah no I, I, I reckon like I said I can see when you're when you're flipping between the styles from a filming point of view obviously because you wanting to portray it's like when the uh, like the other they have a place in the UK called the British Action Academy where they coach fight choreography and the each weapon system, they coach a different character type. So broadsword, you've got to fight like a medieval knight. Rape, you've got to fight like a pirate. And it's, it's a sort of similar concepts, isn't it? You, there's different character types um, that you can play within those different physicalities of martial arts, isn't there? Typically boxers, more squat, mm -hmm. lay down. Capoeira is going to be more flowing, like you said, in with the dance and... You know, I think that's what I've, that's one thing really impressed whenever I watch you is um, how effortless you make that look. And it's it's not effortless, of course, but that comes through all the training that you put in. Well, thank you. I really appreciate that. I, I definitely try to change the style a lot. And, it, you know, it makes life a little more interesting for me. Um, and then it makes choreographing fights like way more fun because you do have the knowledge to, you know, add different flares from other martial arts. And, um, you know, in a way I kind of feel like that's how Bruce Lee thought of JKD. Like that's his mixed martial arts pretty much. Like he developed JKD because he took all the strong things from every martial art he studied. So I think it's a really cool thing.
No, I, I agree completely. Um, and, and that leads me to kind of um, one thing you're known for is like, like weapon with like Kali and you obviously did the Kali diaries, didn't you? Um, what can you tell me about doing them then? I mean, honestly, I, 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 I built Kali diaries just because I wanted to see my progression as a Kali artist. But then along the way, I was like, you know, why am I not adding other martial arts that I do in this? Because um, it's kind of fun to see like the different styles too. Um, I think you probably saw my Kali diaries number 10 where I train in different martial arts and I fight them in different styles. Um, I'm trying to finish that when I get back home. So hopefully I, I can do um, a Capoeira one, um, a JKD, and a C. Uh, we already did C a lot. Uh, what was the other one I wanted to do? Um, yeah, I can't remember right now, but yeah, I'm hoping to finish that that little that ten of the series. I mean, and then obviously going from all this martial arts training and all this work that you've put in. Uh, and then you find yourself in, like we mentioned right at the start, so many of these well-known films and shows. Um, I mean, it's hard to kind of, you know, when I look when I look through your resume, it's hard to kind of go, okay, let's talk about that one. You, you could spend forever talking about your resume, even up till this point, because it's so vast and, and diverse. But I'm guessing there's got to be a few standout roles in your mind then. So what 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 do you think of the... You know, the ones that stand out as you're going, oh, wow, that was a wow moment. Or, you know, this was, you know, this is a really been a fun project then. Um, I was fortunate enough to um, do the motion capture for Ahsoka in Clone Wars. Um, you know, I, I tell everyone that's like literally one of my highlights of my career because I got to fight Ray Park, who is Darth Maul, um, who he reprised his role in that fight. Um have you seen it? By yeah, the I have. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean that. And the the really cool thing about that too is that I was able to choreograph my side of the fight, which was, um, you know, an honor. And um, because that you know sometimes most of the time every job has like their own fight coordinator, and he has the final say in what goes. But it was really cool that we had the final say, or at least we had an input of what our side of the character would do. So it was really cool to be in that spot. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I've met Ray. Ray's an awesome individual. So I, I, I knew when you'd kind of done that, I thought, oh, but that was uh, amazing to do. And he he's trained heavily in Wushu as well, hasn't he, from from when he was younger. So, um, yeah, that, that must have been incredible. And, and so motion capture then, I mean, obviously that's a different thing entirely to stunts and films, isn't it? What, what were you having to do with that then? So motion capture is basically, you know, you're in this room and you pretty much have to pre pretend the whole environment around you. Um, and you kind of have to like give, you're like given descriptions of characters and scenes without actually being in it. So you really have to have like a creative imagination. Um, so that's the only difference really. I mean, um, and, the, you know, there's no reset the reset is you just doing it again. <laughs> so we are just going after like Ray and I literally would do take after take after take um, and just going after it, you know, it, it, we, there's no like hair and makeup reset or anything. So yeah, it was, a little, it was draining, but, <laughs> but it was all worth it for sure. I mean, talking about Star Wars then, obviously, it, you know, we're, we're going to have to talk about the Mandalorian because that's, you know, um, obviously recent, very hugely popular for good reason, an amazing show. Um, but obviously your fight, you know, your your scenes within that have, have gained just as much, um, I guess, kind of positivity for, you know, how well and how amazing it turned out. So um, did whose uh, choreography was it for, for that routine then? Um. When I doubled Emily Swallow on um, season one, doubling the armor, um, it was Brian Watson. He's the stunt coordinator for that show. And he is actually an amazing martial artist. He, you know, he trained in Lod and Filipino and Capoeira, a lot of the same martial arts that I did. And he actually was a dancer as well. So 
we have a lot of similar background and he's super easy to work for. So it was like just a pleasure to work for him. And um, Dave Filoni was actually the second unit director for that. And he actually directed me on Clone Wars. So it was, it was really cool to be with that team of people. And I, I've read like there was quite a lot of takes for that fight scene. Is that right? Yeah, we did different like setups, you know, that's how it, every fight is shot pretty much like most of the time they want to shoot different angles and that's just part that's just part of how it is when we shoot stuff so what was it like being on the set not just doing it once <laughs> so what was it like being on oh, sorry to say what what was it like being on that set then because obviously it's such a um heavily promoted show isn't it that um you know how how did you enjoy your time on on, on that show Man, I just relished in like being there because the set alone was just ugh, unbelievable. It was like um, history in the making, I guess, for Star Wars fans. Um, you know, seeing the way they create everything, it's just so ugh, like vivid and real. Like, you know, the walls were like made of like foam, but the way they painted it and like carved it was like unreal. And then like they have that. Um, it's that like surround sound screen where it's like all digital and it moves when you walk, which was like crazy. Like it's like cutting technology. And it, that was alone was like one of the coolest things to see besides baby Yoda, of course. <laughs> yeah. Cause it's, it's got a massive budget, hasn't it? Anything to do with star Wars has got, you know, things thrown at it to make it, um, to make it the biggest and best. Um, so, and and because I, I guess that brings me to the next point is is because the, there's such a big audience for it, isn't it? I mean, now you've been in Star Wars, I'm guessing now it's like you must get it now where they've got a really huge fan base who absolutely love that universe, the canon, the culture, the stories behind it. It's, it's huge, isn't it? Yeah, the fans are like literally the best. Like they'll send me fan mail. One, one company sent me like a the armor helmet that they made. <laughs> I mean, it, it's incredible. The fans are seriously the most loyal and like amazing people. <laughs> like, and yeah, it's just incredible to be a part of that universe now. No, and, and they'll, 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 you know, you'll always be a part of it because that's one thing I've definitely seen is, you know, from day one, you know, those fans are, you know, they will, they will, they don't forget who's been in, in the films. It's, uh, it'll always be the, the following there. But that's not the only universe, is it? Because obviously, we're for all, like I said, we mentioned before about the diversity of everything you've been in. You've been in Marvel, you've been in DC, you know, you've been in um, films such as Fast and the Furious series, Transformers. So there's lots of big productions that you've been involved with. And so I guess like Stargirl was a, another recent one and that's DC. How, how and you know, your, your fight scenes again, you know, very... Pro prolific in there. How, how did you enjoy being on, on that set? That was literally one of my dream jobs as well. Like to work with such a talented group of people, um, Christina Basket, who doubles Stargirl, Joanna Bennett, who is our assistant coordinator. She, you know, has doubled Gal Gadot and like uh, Brie Larson um, to work with Colin Fallenweider, who's like the wire uh, rigging coordinator who, was Ant-Man pretty much and then Wally Garcia who's the stunt coordinator it was just uh it was just really a delight to work with such talented people and creative people because some of the scenes that we shot were so elaborate you know for even for a movie and we did it in less the time so it was just it really pushed me to my to my best and I will never forget it it was probably one of the most fulfilling jobs actually like what we did on that show and, and it turned out amazing and actually it's kind of I guess it's the uh, you know it, and what you've seen over the past five years I don't know if, if, if you feel that way but you're seeing more and more um, of these fight scenes with women taking the lead than you used to do historically you know it's really it's really mm -hmm. changed a little bit hasn't it and and you know, like programs like that and those, like I said, those fight scenes are, are kind of showcasing, you know, just how how fantastic uh, they, they can be when, 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 when the right people come together. Yeah, I mean, it's a beautiful time right now because women are more in, put in positions of power. Like, 
you know, I think Wonder Woman really like hit it on the nose and that just blew up. And then now, now we're just seeing a lot of like empowerment in women, which I think is a great thing right now. We're seeing more women directors, women stunt coordinators. And I think, um, you know, it, it's great to have diversity now. No, and I mean, going going uh, into that kind of um, niche further then with stunts, what, has there been any time when you've gone, oh, this stunt's not gone right, I've got, or have, have you had a stunt go wrong for you that you've got injured, you know, what, have you got any like, because it's a, it's a dangerous job, isn't it, at the end of the day, you only need one foot to go wrong and, you know, things can go a bit, um, go pear-shaped. Have there been any moments where you've had some injuries where you thought, wow, that was a close call, that stunt? Yeah, the one that sticks out in my mind is um, I had to do a car hit in water in uh, like a rain scene. Um, you, you know, first of all, getting hit by a car is never a fun thing to do. I mean, I would say most people don't enjoy it. Um, but then to also do it in rain where you, you know, the factors could change things. It could be more slippery. You know, there's just so many factors that could go wrong. Um, so I did a car hit in the rain for the show called Secret Obsession on Netflix. And um, I remember doing it and I, you know, after it happened, I was like, did we do it? Like, I don't even remember. <laughs> and then, and then, you know, everyone's freaking out and they come up to me like, don't move, don't move. And I'm like, why? <laughs> and they're like, they thought I landed on my neck because the way I like wrecked it looked pretty gnarly. Um, and, you know, I felt fine. I thought I felt fine. And I, think I was fine but I definitely think I blacked out a little bit because the whole weekend I was so exhausted like I slept all weekend um and then it kind of like brought a little bit of PTSD to me actually which I didn't realize until I was like walking down the street and then cars were like anytime a car was like uh driving closely to me I would freak out like oh my god <laughs> like so it was like a weird PTSD that I didn't know could happen so yeah, it kind of messed with my head a little bit after that. No, like you said, it's it's a, it's a physical job, isn't it? And and like you've mentioned there, that that could have gone a lot worse. And that's the that's always the the risk. Even though it's, I think from what I've seen of the stunt industry, no one's more careful about looking after the performers and you know taking all the the right safety measures. But like any contact, you know, the, the, these things can happen. So. How physically draining is it doing your job role then? Because um, obviously people see the 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 at tip of the iceberg, the glamour side of it, the actual the final product. But you know, like you've mentioned before, you you've had to take many many takes, and it'd be like someone saying, "Right, refight that round, refight that round, refight that round." You know, how 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 physically uh, draining do you find the the job role then? It can be really draining. I mean there's days where you go home and you just sleep or you just need Advil because you took too many hard hits. Um, I remember I did another stunt where I had to jump out of a moving car onto pretty much concrete, a street. Um, and we had to do it a couple of times. Um, and I remember after the second, I was like, Oh my God, I, I'm, I, I, I don't know. I might, I, can I walk tomorrow? I don't know. And the next day I like literally was walking like I was a, a like a 90 year old woman, like I was like slowly walking and it, it really takes a toll on your body of, of, over time. Um, you know, I definitely have ailments in my body now, like my neck, you know, there's different things that you go through, but you just try to recover as quickly as you can to get to the next job. Yeah, it can be draining <laughs> for sure. So going forward then is, is, is this what, you know, is, is working in stunts or is it, is it, have you got your eye on maybe um, moving into different roles in the film industry? So what, what does the future look like for you then? Where, where do you see yourself wanting to, to progress to going forward? I mean, I would love to, you know, assistant coordinate for a little bit and learn more about that side of the business, um, you know, learning about more, you know, behind the scenes and like, you know, to being the boss, um, I would love to be a fight coordinator. I would love to be part of a fight team and like just start choreographing fights. Um, yeah, I mean, those would be the two things that I would really enjoy being once I, you know, don't want to perform anymore, or just want to break. Yeah, I think that would be the next step for me. 
And is there any projects that you've got coming up that you're excited about or, or are you not allowed to talk about them just yet? Um, yeah, I have a pretty big one that I just finished, but I'm not allowed to say just yet what it is, but, um, but yeah, <laughs> um, it's definitely going to be history in the making, I think. And, and you, you mentioned before about obviously, um, female empowerment and in, in the role and, you know, we, if we talk, look to last year when lockdown was on, you did that viral video with, with, with many other, um, leading actors and stunt performers. Uh, how did how did that come about? Uh, it's funny. I actually did one before that with um, Aaron Tony, who's um, Anthony Mackney's stunt double, um, and that got a lot of like press too. But then um, Zoe Bell, who is one of the most famous stunt women, I think, um, she used to double um, Uma Thurman for Kill Bill. Um, she started this, um, she just started to start one for all her stunt and actor friends. And that one went super viral, obviously. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was all Zoe's doing. And, um, uh, we just got together with some actors that we knew and it is what you see today. It, it, it was just a really amazing thing to be a part of, you know, women, strong women in the industry. Yeah, I mean, it's. T- I mean, like I said, lockdown was a crazy time, and it was it was fun to see uh, things like that coming out of it. Which during normal times, those things probably would wouldn't have happened. So, you know, you've got to look at the right. silver lining sometimes and think, well, actually, you know, people can be creative, and you know, you get fun things and right. you know, inspiring things like that. And I, I guess one of the things, obviously, that I mentioned, you know, for years to um, to people in the UK was about. So we, I've, I've, I've been around young female athletes. I said, you know, you'd make an amazing stunt woman, you know, and I guess for them, they've not seen it as a potential career choice in the UK. Oh, it doesn't sound like, even though they've got elite level gymnastics, they've got great martial arts. I'm like, so if you, if you were to say to someone listening to this or watching, um, what would be your advice if, how would they get into the industry if they wanted to emulate what you do and, and be the next, uh, the next stunt performer on the, on the future Marvel shows? Um, I think, you know, hard work, dedication, perseverance um, will get you a long way, but also having a good head on your shoulders. I always say to be humble, um, you know, just always try to learn, never have an ego. Um, And I think that's a martial arts way too. Um, being open and accepting to everything, you know, Um, and I think that will take you really further because, you know, end of the day, people want to work with people that are good people, not, not just because they're talented, but because, you know, they have to hang out with them on set all day. So, um, yeah, I think just all the things I just said, and just having a good head on your shoulder, end of the day, just being a good person too. No, I, you know, I can, I can definitely agree on, on, I definitely think that, you know, from one, when I've ever spoken to anyone who's been in your line of work, that's, one of the things that I think comes across is being, um, you know, from the martial arts point of view as well, is being without ego, being open, being open to learn. And, and, and I guess that's why, you know, you've continued to evolve and move forward. I mean, it's, it's crazy, isn't it? I mean, you've, you've been doing it a long time now, but it just doesn't seem to, you know, it just, you just seem to keep going up and up and up and all the pro- product- productions and the projects seem to be more and more exciting and I'm like, wow, that's it's so amazing to see that journey continuing for you. And, and and I guess that's kind of in response to all your hard work and, and the character and attributes you've just mentioned there, you know, as your advice to someone else. Yeah, I think that that, that is the way, <laughs> as Mandalorian would say. <laughs> Okay, well, I it's been amazing having you on, Lauren. I've been really excited to talk to you. It's been uh, fantastic to hear about uh, the sets you've been on and, and, and your journey so far. Um, for anyone listening or watching, uh, if you want to find out more about Lauren, I know Lauren's got an amazing Instagram account. You need to go and get following today because uh, she puts out so much amazing stuff on there. But is there anything else that people can, can hit up to uh, find out more or get in touch? Um, yeah, definitely check out my YouTube page and that's where I'll, um, 
I'll post some of my reels on there. Um, and definitely my Kali Diaries, if you guys want to check it out. You can watch it from Kali Diaries, number one to 10. Oh, no, definitely get watching them. Um, I, I love them. I'm looking forward to seeing uh, what's next. Um, okay, well, thank you once again, Lauren. It's been an amazing pleasure. Uh, I look forward to seeing what this next project is that you can't tell us about. Uh, I'm, I'm sure it's <laughs> going to be equally as amazing. Um, but thank you once again. Thank you.